Hey guys, Mark here, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20, a phone that's been making waves in the tech space, and not in a good way. In fact, this might be one of the most hated phone releases of this year so far, and to be honest with you, I don't really think it deserves it because, and I wanna be perfectly clear here, this is not a bad phone at all. In fact, the only real problem with this phone is the launch pricing. Samsung has listed this phone at 1,000 US dollars. A very premium price for what you'll see shortly is not a very premium phone. But what a lot of reviewers are forgetting is that a lot of people don't buy the phone outright from Samsung. They can go with the carrier deal and potentially get the phone for a very cheap monthly price or even free with a plan like this AT&T deal I found. Maybe you're watching this video six months later and the phone has already dropped in price to 600 bucks. Who knows? Either way, I'm not ready to write off this phone completely just because it has a poor $1,000 launch price. Now luckily I didn't have to spend a thousand of my own dollars on this phone because it was sent over to me by my friends over at wirelessplace.com. This video is not sponsored, but if you're looking for any unlocked Samsung phone like this one, I'll leave a link to their website in the description down below because it's a great place to get one. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up the Note 20 is how light it is. It's a 6.7 inch phone, so although it is big in the hand, it doesn't feel heavy at all, coming in at 192 grams. The second thing you'll notice is that you don't get that cool, familiar touch when your hand comes in contact with glass. And that's because this phone has a plastic back. This is probably one of the biggest reasons that people are very critical about this phone. Plastic is really not something you'd expect on a phone that Samsung is pricing for a thousand bucks. And they do deserve all the flack they're getting for it. That said, plastic does have its advantages. It's more durable for one, and if you do manage to break it, it's much cheaper to replace plastic than it is glass. You'll still get all the comforts you'd get on a regular flagship like wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, IP68 water and dust resistance, and even a matte coating on this Mystic Gray variant that greatly contributes to the fight against fingerprints. It just won't feel as nice as a glass phone. The vast majority of you put cases or skins on your phones anyway, so I don't think this is as big of a deal as people are making it out to be, at least from a user's perspective. The rear of the phone also sports a triple lens camera system and a camera bump that is significantly smaller than the one on the Note 20 Ultra, probably due to the fact that the regular Note 20 lacks that 5X periscope lens found on the Ultra. More on that later. Flipping the phone around, you'll see something that I haven't seen on a Note device since I believe the Note 5 back in 2015, a flat screen. Now, I know a lot of you guys like curved displays because it looks cool, but they never made sense on a phone with a stylus like the S Pen. The edges of the display just become unusable on the Ultra, so the flat display on the Note 20 just makes sense here. Plus, you get no accidental touches, so it's a win-win for me. The bezels are still nice and thin, although the hole punch for the selfie camera is a little bit bigger than it is on the Ultra, so not sure what's up with that. The 6.7 inch AMOLED display isn't all great though. Yes, the colors are great, and it doesn't have any off axis color shift like you'd find on cheaper panels, but this is a 1080p 60 hertz screen. It doesn't have a higher resolution like 1440p, and it doesn't have the high refresh rate option like the 120 hertz on the Ultra. If we were at a 600 or even $700 price point, I don't think anyone would have batted an eye at that, but at a thousand bucks, it just adds fuel to the fire that was already caused by the plastic back on this phone. Now, I don't really think the 1080p resolution is an issue since it seems plenty sharp for everyday use, but I would have definitely liked to see a bump up in that refresh rate, at least to 90 hertz so we can get those buttery smooth animations. The speakers are good at least, and with that flat 6.7 inch display and HDR10 plus support, the phone makes for a decent little pocket TV when you're on the go. The Note 20 regular does have an upgraded S Pen, although it falls somewhere between the Note 20 Ultra and last year's Note 10. Last year's S Pen had a response time of 46 milliseconds, and that has been almost cut in half with the Note 20 down to 25 milliseconds. It feels good. Not quite as good as the Ultra's 9 milliseconds, coupled with that high refresh rate display, but good nonetheless. I'm not a huge S Pen user, but I do use it to take notes and write grocery lists from time to time. All right, let's talk about the cameras. The regular Note 20 adopts a similar style camera module as the Note 20 Ultra, although the cameras and the module itself are significantly reduced in size. It has a 12 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 64 megapixel 3X telephoto. It does seem a bit weird that they put the higher resolution camera on the telephoto, but I suspect that was done so that they could get a better 30 times hybrid zoom. 
The Note 20 can shoot up to 8K in 24 frames per second from the main camera or 4K at 60 frames per second from any of the cameras, including the 10 megapixel selfie camera that seems to be the same one that is on the Ultra. I do like the colors coming from the Note 20 series, although it does seem like the regular Note 20 does bias a little bit more towards oversaturating like previous Samsung phones. Sharpness and contrast are decent, but I wasn't as impressed with the cameras on the regular Note 20 as I was on the Note 20 Ultra. I would stick the Ultra up there in quality with Apple and Google's lineup of flagships, whereas the regular Note 20 kind of just sits comfortably in third place. Video stabilization is excellent overall though, and I think most people will be happy with the good overall camera performance on this phone. Battery life from the 4300 milliamp hour battery inside has been great overall, especially when compared to the battery life I was getting on my Ultra. This is most likely due to the fact that it has a smaller, lower resolution display running at a lower frame rate, but I couldn't kill this battery in a single day. On September 2nd, I had a screen on time of just over five hours and I still had over 50% battery left. Not too shabby at all. Now I do want to warn you, the model I have here is the global version with the Exynos 990 and it's not the model I would recommend you buy if you can help it. I didn't know this at the time of my Note 20 Ultra review, but there are actually fairly significant differences in both battery life and performance between the Exynos 990 and the Snapdragon 865 Plus models. Zach from Jerry Rig Everything did a great video on this, and I'll link it in the description down below if you're interested in watching it, but the conclusion is that the Snapdragon models do perform significantly better in both speed and battery life, so if you can help it, go with that model. That being said, performance on my Exynos model has been just peachy. No slowdowns or glitches, and it can play the most demanding mobile games with ease. So unless you're more of a power user and you want to use this with the new wireless DeX mode to get a more desktop experience frequently, you're probably not going to notice a huge difference between the Exynos and Snapdragon models in real world use anyway. So like I said in the beginning of this video, there's nothing inherently wrong with this phone. Everything is good. The display is good, the battery life is good, the performance is good, the cameras are good. It's just not a good value from a launch price perspective. For a thousand US dollars, you can get a OnePlus 8 Pro and use the remaining 100 bucks on a pair of OnePlus Buds, which is, in my opinion, a much, much better deal. But if you can get a good discount on this phone or a great carrier deal, there's nothing wrong with the Note 20. It's a good phone. I highly recommend you go check out my video of the Note 20 Ultra if you haven't seen it already and do a little bit of comparison for yourself. And if that's the case, I'll leave a link for you right here. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel. And as always, have a great day.